Dr. Timothy Leary has been described as being either a prophet or a fiend. He is the dominant figure in the current uproar on the use of LSD. In 1963, he was fired from the Harvard faculty for involving undergraduates in his experiments with drugs. In March of this year, he was arrested for smuggling marijuana in from Mexico, is presently appealing that 30-year jail sentence. A man very much in the news, here is Dr. Timothy Leary. When, doctor, did you first start experimenting with LSD? Uh, six years ago. And that was during the time that you were on the faculty? I was uh, teaching psychology at Harvard. I've been a psychologist for 15 years. Right. And I'd come to the sorry conclusion that um, psychology wasn't doing much to solve the uh, emotional or the mental problems of the human uh, race, and particularly the American people. So I went to Mexico, and a friend of mine who was an anthropologist uh, told me about uh, a method which had been used by the Indians in Mexico, the medicine and the priests, uh, before the white man came. Uh, they used mushrooms. They're called sacred mushrooms. And he told me that uh, they grew, they still grow in the uh, mountains near Mexico City. So one afternoon, a sunny Saturday afternoon, six years ago, he brought over a bag of these mushrooms. And I ate seven of them. And I learned more about psychology, about the human mind, about the human situation in the five hours after uh, eating these mushrooms than I had. They had a five hour effect. A uh, five hour effect, yeah. What I is learned the more uh, in those five hours than I had learned studying, uh, doing research in psychology and treating people as a psychotherapist. May I first ask you, yes, your title, doctor. My title? A, a medical doctor? No, I'm a, a psychologist. Psychologist, psychologist, right. It's estimated by the Federal Food and Drug Administration that perhaps 15 or 20 percent of our young people today are exploring their consciousness, trying to find out more about their mind using these uh, chemicals. But aren't the majority of them doing it for kicks? I don't think so. I, I've been on many television programs uh, where middle-aged people sit around and shake their head and worry about the young people having kicks. And first of all, what is a kick? Uh, it is true that LSD uh, provides an ecstatic experience. It, it gives you an incredibly pleasant experience. But this pleasure is not the pleasure that you get from a, a bottle of beer or that you get from watching even a good television show. The pleasure you get from uh, LSD is being tuned in. You're turned on to your own nervous system. You're turned on to uh, your own body. You're turned on to the incredible wisdom which lies inside every cell in your body. It's the, ex the ecstasy that a scientist gets when he suddenly uh, has something open up to him. It's there are cautions with it, aren't there, doctor? That, it, that uh, a, a young person cannot go out and take LSD. We, we read in papers of cases, recently a boy on the Lower East Side here thought he suddenly could fly and attempted to jump out the window. It doesn't work. It doesn't have the same effect on every human being. Oh, absolutely. Uh, when you take LSD or a psycho, uh, psychedelic drug, it's like putting a microscope on your eyes that stays there for eight hours. Now, for the first half hour, you have these microscopes on, and it's wonder, it's revelation. Uh, it's a deep religious experience. You realize that there's more uh, beauty and more meaning, and there's this intelligent plan inside your brain. It's delightful. But then after about an hour or two or three, you may say, well, now that's been interesting, but I'd like to, take, I'd like to go back to uh, mother's apple pie and to uh, uh, automobiles and so forth, but you can't. See, the LSD experience lasts about eight hours. So you can... Now, it's true that the unprepared person gets frightened when he takes LSD. But uh, this is a new form of energy. I'm in the unfortunate position of being about 20 years ahead of my time. Now, whenever you're 20 years ahead of your time, you're in a risky position because it always takes one generation for uh, a new form of energy to be accepted. You know, when the airplane came along uh, 20, 30 years ago, the older generation to a man said, they'll never get me up there. I don't want to get high. Uh, the next generation, everyone's flying around in airplanes. The same thing is true with these new psychedelic drugs. And I'll say to your uh, viewers, uh, within 10 or 15 years, psychochemicals which expand consciousness and accelerate the mind and open up uh, the wisdom that's inside will be just as common as books are today. And when your kid comes home from school, you won't say to him, what book did you read today? Uh, you'll say, uh, which molecule did you use to open up which Smithsonian Institute or which uh, Library of Congress uh, exists inside your own mind?
I know that sounds far out, but everything, every new uh, advance in science just seems impossible. How can you use drugs to uh, open up your mind as an educational tool? How many times have you taken LSD, Doctor? I've taken LSD uh, 311 times. We'll be right back. Thank you.